Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me this week for our episode is Dr. Josina Jeloff. Dr. Jeloff is a veterinarian at Healthy Climate Solutions. Dr. Josina, thank you very much for joining me on the podcast this week. Why don't you give everybody an introduction? Hello, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I'm Josine Gelauf. I'm from the Netherlands, so that's why my last name is so difficult. Um, I'm a veterinarian for uh, for pigs in uh, in practice, and I also started a company uh, called Healthy Climate Solutions to get some more insight into the pig behavior and climate settings in the in the farms. Very good. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, let's start a little bit with kind of a general overview of why the pig's environment and, and um, environmental quality is so important as it relates to pig behavior and ultimately pig well-being. Well, in the farm, you can see that the pigs always try to get the best thermal comfort areas where they want to lie down. Um, so the we focus a lot on where they should get the manure and get the air quality right because the combination of manure uh, and the climate is very big. And we still um, have a lot to learn about air quality, but we do know that CO2 levels are very important for the, um, for the climate control. And uh, you get some, uh, some really good um, uh, control about the air quality if you focus some more on uh, measuring this. Um, we know for sure that uh, CO2 has a relation to ammonia and fine dust particle levels. Um, so if you have some more measurement data from your farm, you can definitely improve the health of the farm for your pigs, but also for the workers and yourself. Imagine being able to monitor your animals and farm climate remotely. The Healthy Climate Monitor combines camera and sensor data, and they will give you real-time insight into behavior, temperature, CO2, relative humidity, ammonia, and air pressure, light intensity, and particulate matter. We give you insight, and you get control. Find us at HealthyClimateMonitor.com. Is um, CO2, Josina, just a, a, the most convenient gas to measure as a proxy for things like ammonia and dust particulates? Um, or is CO2 the most important molecule from a pig respiratory health standpoint, and therefore that's the one we should be monitoring? No, it's a very easy and low level uh, to, to measure. So it's a proxy, definitely. Um, and we know for sure that CO2 has an important relation to the air quality factors that definitely give uh, lung problems. So fine dust particles, for instance. Um, and we have some very good um, correlations that, uh, yeah, so that we can, we can know now that we, uh, we should definitely measure some more than only the temperature. You said it's um, relatively easy to measure. How does that process work on a farm? Yeah, so um, if you would like to measure a certain areas that uh, give you some problems, um, recurring problems, for instance, then um, you could just take one or two systems to, uh, to monitor those areas some more closely. And uh, uh, we have a system also with a camera so that you can focus on pig behavior and what are do they doing at what time. And you can see them real time. So if you can watch your pigs real time, also uh, at the times that you're not there, um, that gives a huge amount of information uh, on why the, the pigs do what they do. And uh, veterinarians, but also farmers themselves can easily analyze the, the camera images and, uh, and the sensor levels. Um, so it's, it's very easy to, to get some insight into uh, what's going on. Do you have to be at the barn to get that insight or can those sensors deliver that information to you remotely on your smartphone or your computer? Yes, um, the system works with the 4G, Wi-Fi or internet cable and uh, it goes to the cloud so uh, you can access the data from anywhere on your mobile or your laptop. For one of these systems, how many different measurements can you get? Is it one um, probe, for lack of a better term, per system? Or can I measure multiple rooms with a single system just using different um, probes, for lack of a better term, to measure in each room? 
Um, well, with one healthy climate monitor, you can measure in one area, um, but with multiple sensors, we have the most integrated system uh, as it goes for camera and uh, sensors in one system. Um, so you can measure CO2 temperature, fine dust particles, uh, the light intensity as well, or a lux you can also add. Uh, we can measure the sound, um, ammonia, of course. So uh, if you would like to add an extra ammonia uh, sensor that is possible on a, on a very long cable, it would be possible to measure in more areas than only in one. Um, but the distance is, yeah, it's uh, uh, for one system, it's, uh, it's usually used in one area, in one unit. Does the system have any sort of um, alarm function or alert me function where you can set a range of normal and acceptable levels for things like CO2 or ammonia? Um, and then when you get outside of that range, even if you're not watching it on your smartphone or whatever at that point, it triggers you and says, hey, here's something you should pay attention to. Yes. Um, so if you would like to uh, get an alarm notification on your uh, app or in, uh, in the, your email, that's possible. Um, and we use the, um, the parameters, the levels, the maximum levels that, uh, uh, that are set for both piglets, for sows, for fattening pigs. And we also follow the curve. So the temperature should go down uh, during the round. And then we also uh, get that into the software so that you can get an actual notification for the, for the right time at the right animal uh, production phase. And how about um, coordination with ventilation systems? Does the system um, talk to your controller today and um, manipulate things like fans or fan speeds or inlet openings, anything like that related to the ventilation system? Uh, no, we don't do that. Uh, at, the at this time, we uh, have developed it as a monitoring system and it's most mostly used by farmers, by veterinarians and feed advisors. Um, so it's it's used only for a few months usually or for a few weeks in uh, in one farm, and then um, we take it uh, take it down or the veterinarian takes it down, cleans it, and uses it for another farm again. Okay, and what sort of situations, uh, Josina, do you think are the best situations to use it? You know, what what condition of your pigs, health status, or stage of life, something like that? Would you say this is where that system has the most value, and this is where you should move it into that farm during this situation? Well, if you have um, problems that you cannot solve using the um, yeah the most uh, obvious uh, rules of vaccination or uh, other health improve, improvement uh, factors. So um, uh, that is probably in the weaned piglet areas, but it can also uh, mean reproduction problems or um, lung problems, of course. Um, so it's, um, uh, it's actually every time that you use the system, you can see some points that you uh, would like to improve. So there's always something knew that you're seeing because you were never there during the night. You were ne never there uh, when the wind was changing. And uh, the system gives you so much information that there will always be something that you can uh, learn and improve. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. What sort of variability do you see with the system when you measure 24 hours a day, seven days a week? How often do you see those unusual situations that pop up where maybe the workers say the environment looks great, feels great when they're there, but when we're not there, how often do you find a big fluctuation that is important and meaningful to the pigs who are always there? Yeah. Well, for instance, we do see many, many um, farms that have a high ammonia level during the nighttime. Because when the temperatures drop outside, the ventilation system goes to a minimum and then the ammonia levels can be really high. Um, and most of the farmers, they are not there during the nighttime and they yeah, just don't see or feel that. Um, so that is one thing. And also what happens sometimes is that uh, the temperature in the room is not 
as well controlled as they think it is. Uh, so sometimes you can see very many fl big fluctuations uh, while well, actually the temperature sensor should uh, should keep it on uh, on one temperature steady the whole day and night. Um, so that's, for instance, that we see a lot and uh, and also very high CO2 levels uh, at the starting point of uh, just after weaning, when you uh, start with a fresh, fresh batch of uh, weaned piglets. Uh, usually the CO2 levels and ammonia levels are extremely high because of... Uh, yeah, of manure in the in the cold, wet compartment, and little ventilation because you want to keep it warm. Very good, very interesting information, Josina. Um, I think it's uh, certainly safe to say that we probably need to think about measuring more than just the temperature when it comes to our environmental measurements going forward. Yes, I think that would be uh, from a health perspective. Um, something that we must improve in the future for, for every big farm. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Josina, for coming on the show. And to our audience, thank you for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. For Dr. Josina Jilloff, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thank you very much and have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.